Nick, why have you invited me to Backyard for a secret meeting? Because I've got something really new and exciting to show you. There's a guy coming in with a box. You're gonna like it. Hey man, how's it going? How are you doing? You right? I'm Stu from Tram. Inside this box is some exciting new parts. Why didn't you tell me about this? Because, uh, well, like I said, I signed some forms, so I wasn't allowed to speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to go to prison just to keep you in the loop. Okay, big reveal. Drum roll. <laughs> okay, what do you want to see first? Well, all of it. All of it. So, I mean, should we start in order of excitement? Yes, please. So, this is the new Force chain set. Super exciting new look. Um, as you can see straight off the bat, the obvious thing is the, the change to the chain ring. So, using the technology that we've already kind of had proven with the red level group set. So, one piece chain ring design, machined out of a single piece of aluminium. And this one has the, the fully integrated power meter in it as well. A big chunk of the, of the reason for the new force was, was aesthetic actually because if I'm honest it was it was something which the old force group set came under fire for a little bit. A few people said that it kind of looked a little bit uh, drab and a bit dull um, some people even said maybe a bit it looked a bit cheap. What? So you know one of the focal points for the new group set was to address that give it a really kind of like high level pro look and feel. So yeah borrowing some of that technology from the flagship red group set bringing it down to force. So the complete group set um, if you if you compare like for like it's going to be around about 100 grams lighter so significant weight saving uh, and to be honest most of that weight saving has come from the developments that we've done in, in the new chain set. Doing the rings in this way this is the lightest and stiffest way to make a two by chain ring setup especially with the integration of a power meter. Get a look at that. Can you see the kind of hologram effect on the graphics and stuff there? This we're calling Unicorn Grey. That's our, our company's name for the new colorway. What is it? Unicorn Grey. It looks more like the red stuff now, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, I think it's a mix. Yeah. It's got a bit of the shiny, but then a bit of the black. Yeah. So yeah, that graphic you're going to see consistent throughout all of the products, but it's way more than just a new aesthetic. I mean, the, the changes that we've made to the new force are really on a practical level about performance improvements or improvements for a, a real reason. You mentioned Rival, so that is a good segue into the, one of the other components that is, has changed a lot for the new Force Group set. Let me open these up for you. Wait, where's the boxes? Does it not come in boxes anymore? No boxes, not when it's Secret Squirrel stuff. No. This has new Force lever, completely uh, redesigned lever, based a little bit around the, the ergonomics of the, what you currently know as the, the Rival shape. As I said, we got a lot of good feedback from the market with that Rival shape. People like the, the slimmer nice. design, um, the aesthetic of the smaller bump is a bit lower in height at the front, so when it's on the bike, yeah, the whole thing looks a bit sleeker. But as I said, there's, a, there's generally more than just an aesthetic reason for doing these things. It's a, there's a practical reason too. And the practical reasons on the, the lever hood is that it gets a better finger wrap, yeah. so it suits a bigger range of hand sizes. It also means with the redesigned paddle on here that you can access the shift button from any like, hand position, so it just means shifting is easier. And there's also less chance with the new design when you go to brake hard that you're going to contact the shift paddle against the bar tape or even squash your fingers, which is you know, something with the older design you could do with sometimes. The so. In the old lever, we actually had a plug-in wired port here inside the under the rubber cover where you could run auxiliary shifters. So if you wanted to have a second shifter point somewhere on the handlebar, like some of the gravel riders, for example, like it on the like the top portion of the bar, um, or if you were running these on a time trial bike, for example, and you wanted secondary shifters somewhere else on the aero bar, you could do that with a plug-in system. So that obviously took up space in the lever hood design. Now that's all gone. We do it with a wireless blip. So if you want auxiliary shifters, you can have up to six auxiliary shifters tuned to the, the axis system um, wirelessly. So you, you, no more cables, um, it's all completely wireless. I've already ordered some to put on my bike that's gonna be hooked up to your bike. <laughs> yeah. I feel I can change your gears, you can't run <laughs> away from me. So yeah, again, as you can see, the consistency with the new Unicorn Grey, uh, the hologram style graphic looks really, really, it just like, looks really super high end. Yeah, well made. Carbon lever, obviously, for force. That's the main difference between that and Rival. Um, obviously to keep the weight down, just that performance element as well. More importantly, 
you know, as you have a coffee shop, yeah. I thought you might like some of these. Oh, look at that. Yes. There you go. We'll get Lewis on the machine. Let's get the coffees on. So, I'll be honest, not a huge amount of internal changes gone on with the brake caliper. So, this is pretty much because it's a, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, exactly. Um, we know our, our brakes are already really, really good. So, just really an aesthetic change here at this end. But as you can see, just that new black with the, the new graphic looks super strong compared to the old style caliper. Yeah. Do you all know what it reminds me of? Did you used to um, do the football sticker books, the yeah. Merlin sticker books? And you got the you got the, the chrome sticker, yeah. Yeah, it reminds it reminds me of like the exactly, shiny, yeah. which were always like the high value ones. Aren't yeah, they? yeah, the ones you could swap for more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you you actually look quite pro in a cab. Hey, we've got some biscuits for coffee. Biscuits, biscuits. Strong biscuits. Key thing with the rear derailleurs is. Again, not a huge amount of changing in terms of what you're used to from us already um, at the, both the red and the, the, the rival level. It's still an axis derailleur, so using the same motors and everything that we already know, tried and tested. But the key thing with the derailleurs is simplifying the choices for the customer. So there are now only two different derailleurs to choose from. So this is the Max 36, which you can see just written on the back of the derailleur there. So you know it's a Max 36 derailleur, and that's going to cover all your cassette options up to 36. So now the 1028, 1030, 1033, and the 1036 cassette are all covered in a two by setup with this one derailleur. On top of that, we have one other option, which is the Explore version. That's there really to be a one by specific derailleur to cover the 1044 Explore, but it is also compatible with 1036. Exactly the same look and feel, the difference being with the additional length of the B-knuckle on the, the 1044. Front derailleur. I think personally one of my, my favourite changes in terms of aesthetic. I just think this looks so much more stealth. Yeah. The batteries on the on the new force have not changed at all. It's exactly the same axis battery that runs right through the whole product range. And that includes all the mountain bike products as well. They all use the same axis battery. So if you've got multiple bikes, you've got dropper posts, you've got yeah, mountain, mountain bikes with, with batteries on. Um, they're all the same, so you can interchange them. Also means if you're using a dropper post out on a ride, for example, and God forbid your battery should go flat, Happens then you can switch the, ba the battery from the dropper post into the mech so you can still ride home and, and shift. So, or, or presumably even front mech and rear mech. Yeah, yeah, exactly that too, yeah. Well, we've got a few of the lads doing longer distance bike packing yeah. events. Yeah. Um, and with the other two groups of manufacturers, it's batteries and seat posts, you can't just replace it. Yeah, quickly. So if you run out, you have to stop and charge. Where with this, you don't actually have to stop. You can just swap out. The charge also weighs nothing. Yeah, I've got so a, if you wanted to carry one. Another uh, yeah. piece of exciting news about the charger, actually, which you may or may not even know about at this point. Turn it up. Yeah. This is going to just charge one battery, okay? So that's it's fine. It takes about an hour to charge a battery from yeah. completely dead to flat. So again, that's that's worth noting. These batteries, they last for months sometimes, depending on how much you ride, but they take just one hour to charge. So. Really, it's kind of inexcusable these days to, to run out of battery. But the good thing is now we're about to release, at the same time as this group set, a four-way charger. So you can clip up to four batteries into the same charger and it will charge all four in the same time it charges one. So the group set is wireless? Yep, 100%. How, so once it's all linked together, how do I know how much battery I have? There's two ways you can do that. I mean, on the derailleurs themselves, you've got a little LED. Okay, and this, when you shift, is going to flash. Okay, it's flashing green. So that means you're, you're good to go, basically. Um, if that flash is red, then that means you're coming down to the end of the life of the battery. Um, I think it's the last 15% or, or something like that, um, where it, it changes to red. So it's giving you plenty of warning. If it was red, you could probably still go and do at least one ride, and it, it's not gonna go flat on that ride. The other way you can do it is just have a little look on the, the SRAM Axis app. So this is a, a clever phone app, which you can just find the, you save your bike on, on the app, and then, so here we go, I can see this, the components on the app here, and there's a little battery indicator there. There's a whole lot of other functionality built into the app. So for example, configuring controls. So if you wanted to personalize the setup of your bike in terms of which buttons do what, if you, for whatever reason, wanted the left-hand side to, to move the derailleur in the other direction. Bottom brackets. Yeah, the least exciting component of the, the group set, but yeah, still worthy of mention, I guess. Obviously, carries on 
like continuity with all of our other uh, chain sets now with the dub standard. So, and the, the beauty of that is it means that there's pretty much no frames that you can't fit a, a dub chain set to. So, compatibility across all the well known platforms. Um, oh, there's the rest of the dog collar. I knew it was in oh, the dog collar. So, the dog, dog gets a special treat too. You don't want to know what Nick does with dog collars. <laughs> So I guess we've covered like the key components of the of the drivetrain. Yeah. Um, obviously, in here as well, I have the chain and, and cassette for you. I guess the thing to note there is that that hasn't changed. Yeah. So the, the same force level cassette that we're currently offering in, in the same ratio. Ratios, so, yeah. Um, they just work. XDR driver yeah. body as with all of our uh, 12 speed stuff, yeah. and uh, the flat top chain carries through, has now become kind of ubiquitous across all of our like, yeah. high and road group sets. So that just carries over as well. Is, is the flat top of it just for looks or does it have a function? No, the flat top is definitely more about function. So when we moved to 12 speed, our engineers were basically challenged to make that chain ever so slightly narrower, but without compromising strength in, in any way. So obviously that's not, not, not what we want for the chain. So the way that they did that was they looked at all the different possibilities for how they could construct the chain and, and actually filling back in that top section of the outer plate, they found it, it created a, a lot more strength. So that 12 speed flat top chain is actually one of the strongest chains we've ever made. Um, so yeah, people thought it was an aesthetic thing because it does look sick when it's on the, it on the really chain. Does. It looks really cool. Um, so people thought we'd done it purely for aesthetics. I even had some people ask me if it was done for aerodynamics because it kind of looked cleaner. But actually no, it's, it's purely about making that chain as strong as it needs to be. And as I said, it's one of the strongest chains we make because of that filled in yeah. section. So And full proof, you can't feel the wrong way around. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Definitely can't feel it the wrong way around. Good knowledge. Yeah. Well, you could put it the wrong way around, but it wouldn't work. The biggest question we've had is, your mountain bike chains come in copper, gold, black, and oil slick. Yeah. Obviously, the new group said, I mean, an oil slick chain would match that perfectly. Yeah. When are you guys gonna actually start doing colored chains? You know what, so it's not just you that gets asked this a lot, we get asked this a heap of times as well. And up, up until this point, we have produced some road oil slick components, yeah. but we've only given them to our world championship winning athletes. It's been like a special treat thing for them to have on their bike. Um, but the good news is, you're dead right, yes, this will now have an option as an upgrade path. So it doesn't, it's not the standard option, yeah. but there is now an upgrade path to have a rainbow cassette and chain. Probably the most important question, pricing, RRP. Well, that depends a little bit on, on the options you go for. Um, the price range in UK pounds is roughly between 1,500 and 2,200 for the complete group set. 2,200 being the one with the, the integrated power meter in the two by setting, and obviously like a one by group set with no power meter is the lower end of that price spectrum. I mean, depending on how you spec it, it's in the same kind of price bracket as the current Force offering. So New Force launches on March 1st, so a um, couple of weeks time, no, so today in fact, because this video is going live, yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, and when is stock going to be available? Uh, Exactly the same answer, March 1st. So our, our aim is always, when we launch new products, to have stock available for you to buy at, at retail. So what, so someone can actually walk into a bike shop today and go and buy it? All being well, if their bike shop has been clever enough to order this stuff, yep, yeah, it's available to buy in retail from March 1st. <laughs>